Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of Call Towers Media Action Podcast, where we examine the world of unified communications through the lens of emergency situations. Uh, in this podcast, we're going to break down uh, the InformaCast solution that was developed by SingleWire as an emergency notification system. And joining us today is Bryce Dragosh. Uh, he's probably <laughs> shaking his head at my mispronunciation. Um, he's in UCAS channel development from SingleWire. So we're happy to have him with us today to answer a few questions about what exactly uh, uh, InformaCast does and how it can help our customers and our clients with um, with their uh, emergency situations. So uh, Bryce, how's it going today? It's going all right, okay. Glad <laughs> good. It's good, good to have you. Um, we actually, uh, Bryce and I met up at the uh, the Channel Partners event uh, in November and we had a pretty good time there and we're we're happy to to have kind of InformaCast be a little, a little part of the Call Tower family. We're happy to have you guys. Yeah, we're uh, happy to be there as well with you uh, in Call Tower. Perfect. So, all right. So, let's go ahead and, and uh, dig into the solution a little bit. Tell uh, tell me a little bit about what InformaCast does. Like, what's the overall idea behind it? Okay. Well, Single Wire Software is a 20 year old company, and InformaCast is the name of the software that we've developed uh, throughout the, the 20 years of experience. And what it is is a hybrid cloud platform uh, that delivers critical event management. And what I mean by the, the critical event management, it could be things from adding overhead paging, et cetera, uh, to mm -hmm. an UCAS deployment, but it's also about weather alerts, suitor on sites, um, mm -hmm. any kind of, uh, uh, of uh, compliance issues with Kerry's law, Alyssa's law, mm -hmm. and right okay. where we, where we uh, can incorporate our solution to that. And I say it's a hybrid architecture because it's in the cloud, but it's mm -hmm. also as a server on prem for uh, resiliency and for uh, cost effective uh, nature of delivering the messages in in real time and i think uh, the biggest thing that we provide is a platform so mm -hmm. with this, with this platform we're able to have a better reach speed and automation of a notification strategy so whether that's a critical notification or something as simple as including bell schedules into your solution Right. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, I imagine you work with a lot of educational uh, campuses, and uh, so I, <laughs> uh, I'm, I bet a bell solution is very handy, and overhead paging, and of course, um, the alerts when there, if and when there is an emergency. Yeah, it's 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 uh, been uh, especially in the UCAS nature. As you're moving from something that's on prem and you move mm -hmm. to the cloud, uh, you want to keep some of those same workflows. You want to keep some of that same equipment that you already own. Even right of uh, some schools that may have uh, old intercom systems that they've had for 50 years. Mm -hmm. not, they don't want to rip and replace those. They don't want to have to worry about rewiring the building and all that, but they want to be able to still page from their UCAS phone system, not only to other phones, but to those overhead uh, systems and do it very cost effectively. We help integrate any of that into our solution very easily. Very cool. It's, yeah, I imagine. Um, I imagine that's what's holding a lot of a lot of organizations back is that they have legacy systems that they just have no idea if they're going to work at all with the new system or if it's just going to be a hugely expensive implementation fee. But it seems like Informacast kind of works around that really nicely. Yeah, exactly. A lot of times we uh, people look at our our platform as kind of a gateway to the rest of the the facilities uh, devices they have, right? So mm -hmm. it's really interesting so that not only can you include your notifications to phones and speakers, but now you're able to take that same type of messaging and put it on digital signage if you've got it. Let's say you've got some uh, light poles or sirens or door lock mechanisms or any of those mm -hmm. other things. They can now all be automated inside of our command center to be able to have one place to go to set up uh, all of the capabilities that you want to deliver when a certain event happens. So that's why we say it's a critical event management. Absolutely, and and I imagine a lot of uh, a lot of uh, businesses and organizations they they had all these systems individually. Like I'm sure there was just a door lock system and just an intercom system, but having them all in the same place, I imagine, uh, saves their IT people and their and their facilities people a lot of heart, a lot of headaches. It saves a lot of headaches, but it also helps with the automation of it. It also helps with uh, being able to do more in a timely fashion. And that's what you got to have to help keep your people safe and informed in real time when something occurs, right? Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, every second matters when there's a, a, a truly emergency situation. Like, you know, a couple seconds here and there can can save lives. Yeah, especially it's, it's funny. I was talking about my, my school that my son goes to. They had an event about uh, two summers ago. And uh, my son was at the remote campus and he was driving back to check in at his homeroom like you always got to do. But in the mm-hmm. in meantime, there was a shooting incident at oh, the man. School. But she was driving right into it. I was talking to right. her, I was talking to her safety coordinator. He goes, Look, I had to send out this message on this system, this message on that system, and and I just didn't get to the last three. Your son was right. on number four. And it's like, why wouldn't you have a system that you can hit one button and all and it all goes? goes. Yes, yep, exactly. Well, um, my next question was gonna be what do you see as the biggest benefit uh that InformaCast delivers to users and i think you you kind of answered it a little bit like when when the when the chips are down and there's a true emergency situation instead of flipping eight different si- systems there's one big button that's programmed to do something that that you and their people have put your heads together and and seen as the best possible solution for that for that emergency scenario yeah i yes i agree with that and, and what it is is uh the the given the whole platform and being able to, from a cost perspective, bring in bring in the facilities and the, the capabilities right. and, whatnot, and incorporating those is good. Uh, I think it also is in the speed and the reach of what we do and the intrusive nature of the notifications, right? I, I always like to tell people, when you have a fire and you pull your fire alarm, everybody knows what it is. The lights go off, the sirens mm-hmm. go off, et cetera. Why wouldn't you have something similar like that in place for a shooter on site or to yeah. Make- or a wildfire, and that's what we are enabling, right? And with the the intrusive nature is key, and that's one of the big things uh, that we strive to do, and that's why we have a solution that combines mobile notification and a facilities-based notification. When I say facilities, I mean things like the digital signage, the phones that are on-prem, the speaker systems that are on-prem, all that kind of stuff as well as being able to send things out to the mobile world today. Right. And I mentioned there's there's some stuff on the back end too, like only certain users would be authorized to enable certain procedures, but, um, and you could have even buttons. You know, I, I remember when I was on a, a, a university campus a few years back and they had emergency buttons. And I imagine that would be folded into the, the digital infrastructure of this as well, which would be really helpful both for, the people who are, you know, running the big office somewhere and for the emergency situation of the individual who's down at the box. Everyone kind of benefits from a system that works everywhere, you know? Exactly. Matter of fact, that's one of the things that we've just announced. One of the, our recent releases in December, we added the mobile panic button. Oh, um, cool. So because- instead of having to run to an emergency button, you just hit a, hit a button on your phone and, and, it, and it sets off. Not only does it set it off, but it also uh, communicates your through GPS. We know where you're at, and we oh, can and very helpful. We can open up an incident management on our software that will track where you're going, right? Oh, and that's... so that we can we can figure out where the situation is occurring. We can advise you immediately of what to do, etc. So we've we've added a lot of that, and that's that's become really important. We've seen with uh, Things like Alyssa's law in mm-hmm. in the eight through twelve that is big in certain states and it's it's growing, where where that says that every classroom has to have a panic button, and that yeah. pa- and that panic button must alert the local teams, but it also mm-hmm. must then alert through the peace app, right? And yeah. we we are working and we'll have a release later this year where we're going to be integrating our mobile panic button into the ECCs that are out at the peace app. And so we're going to be able to provide that as well. So one of the other big things that we see is that when you put this platform in, Mm -hmm. you're kind of future-proofing yourself because as we add more and more capabilities, they just get integrated into that software and they're immediately now available for a school or a hospital or an industry to be able to take and utilize those in their notification strategy. Fantastic. Yeah, you are you have one system where everything goes through that system. Uh, and if you need to add additional systems, you've got your system right there to add it to. Exactly. Very cool. Well, um, okay, here, here's a question for you. What would you say the biggest differentiation uh, that InformaCast has over uh, some of your competition or other emergency notification systems? What do you personally see as, as the big, the big, you know, the, the big buyout, the buy-in that you get? 
I think, uh, besides, you know, the speed and the reach and the intrusive nature that we strive for, mm -hmm. we also are one of the only systems that provide facilities plus mobile. In mm -hmm. most cases, okay. people have just a mobile capability. And when you look at the studies, they show that when you send out a notification, say that all you're sending out is an email or a right. text. Or a phone, text, yeah. You're, you're only going to reach about 80% of your people. Right. And, and you can't be assured that everyone's gotten it and gotten safe. So we want to be able to send it to everything, including everything that's on prem. So I think the on prem or the inclusion of the facilities uh, capability is 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 a big asset to what we have as a differentiator. Absolutely. I, I would have to agree. Um, just if I'm going to go into anecdotes again, but um, I was at a movie theater recently. And um, there was an, a, a weather alert, you know, going out. And um, I had my phone off in the movie theater because, you know, that's what they tell you to do, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a good little rule follower sometimes, <laughs> apparently. Um, but um, how about half of the theater had little notifications pop up? And I think it was like during the credits or something, you know, so it was not like a it wasn't a big deal. But um, it was good that I was able to see that, you know, several people had gotten something. So I knew something was happening, right? Um, but I imagine that if it was a more serious solution than a small weather event, um, if there had been an active shooter in the building or a fire or something, I would want that facility to have a, a physical response. I'd want, you know, the big, the, the sirens and all that stuff. So the, the fact that you have the hybridization of those two really speaks to the, the efficacy of your product for sure. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Okay, well, I think that actually does it for us today. Uh, thank you so much, Bryce, for for meeting with us and uh, and and helping us kick off this podcast. We really appreciate it. Um, keep listening and don't forget to like and subscribe, and you'll get notifications for upcoming episodes. So thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you soon. Bye bye. Thanks, Kate.